love deaf robots reveals a kind of primal instinct within us, but we'll get back around to that later. From anime to film to books, fear of the unknown is all throughout our media, and a very common horror people face in the real world as well. It's almost natural to humans, an instinct to keep us away from harm, and at the same time, we seek it out. I mean, have you ever looked into a dark alleyway, or stared into the woods at the middle of the night? There could be anything out there. A person? A bear? Or perhaps something stranger? A monster of vaguely anthropoid outline, with an octopus-like head, whose face was a mass of feelers, a scaly, rubbery-looking body, prodigious claws, on hind and four feet, and with long and narrow wings behind. That's how H.P. Lovecraft described his creature, famously known as Cthulhu. Something so unimaginable, impossible to truly understand or comprehend, that even a glance at the creature will drive any human mad. And just the idea of the what if. What if there was a being just like that, hiding just beyond the shadows you gaze into? Or something else, just as hard to wrap your head around? Also, did you guys know there was a Dr. Seuss style Call of Cthulhu book? I didn't, until like, just now. I just thought that was interesting. But back to what I was saying. Love, Death, and Robots is a Netflix original series, an anthology going over a variety of different stories. And some happen to explore the themes I've been talking about, and I have meticulously picked out a few stories to go over. Starting with then, the devotions. Philosophobia is the fear of deep bodies of water. And though I don't personally have this phobia, I kind of get it. If I was stuck, just floating there in the middle of the ocean, surrounded by bodies of endless water, my mind would begin to race with ideas as things began to brush up against my skin from down below. I mean, just imagine chilling at the beach and seeing that thing come out the water. Every man for himself, honestly. Just thinking about all the creatures that lie just beyond my view. I mean, have you ever seen footage of those deep sea creatures? Well, sometimes they surface. And when they do, it can leave a person awestruck in. The Drowned Giant, based on a book by the same name by J.G. Ballard. It's about a giant that pretty much got washed up onto a beach. But from what land could it have come from? Knowledge that beings like this actually exist can make someone feel small. You begin to question everything you thought you knew. And throughout the story, this guy goes pretty much on an existential journey, contemplating the truths of the world. And strangely enough, my favorite part is not getting an answer to these questions. We don't know where it came from, and we probably won't ever know. And with that can come a mixture of fear that these goliaths are out there somewhere. And at the same time, it can inspire another primal instinct. In the end, his face had been transformed into a mask of exhaustion and helplessness. Caught in that same twisting whirlpool for which all our finite lives are destined. But yeah, we're not done with the sea yet. Beyond washing up strange beings from lands beyond, it brings about other mysteries as well. Underneath the sea lies untold stories we could never truly hope to understand. Put yourself in the position of a ship crew and their captain. Out on the sea for months on end, anything could be out there. A fish? Someone adrift? The Dr. Seuss Call of Cthulhu book? The amount of random things like that and rabbit holes I've stumbled upon as I'm making this video is insane. Have you ever heard stories of ghost ships? Strange and unexplainable phenomenon. Or perhaps, creatures like the Kraken. Not to be confused with Draken from the hit Disney Channel show, Kim Possible, or Draken from Tokyo Avengers. Totally different. The Kraken was a sailor story, a beast that sunk ships for fun, possibly coming about from sightings of the animal we now know as the giant squid. Stories of sea creatures have pretty much haunted humans for centuries. And well, bad traveling is a story of such creatures. Though, instead of a squid, a crab, sending a group of sailors pretty much into their own destruction. And all it took was a bit of fear and suggestion. With this aggressive monster from the deep blue on their ship, one of their crew members is forced to make a deal with it. Yes, and not only feed his crewmates to it without the rest of the sailors turning on him, but he has to also sail the ship to a land full of people so this crab can devour them. And just the simple fact that he can communicate with this creature brings about a whole new type of horror that I like to call, I don't want to talk with animals. 
to be honest. Being able to fully comprehend what other creatures think of us is honestly a little unsettling to me. And if I had a pet, I don't think I would be truly ready to hear what it had to say. Where are my testicles, Summer? Where are my testicles, Summer? Yeah, I think Rick and Morty kind of nailed how creepy that would be. And that's not even the most terrifying aspect. To find out what the world looks like through the lens of a creature driven on the sole instinct to devour, reproduce, and conquer. It sees you as food, and you can perceive every single thought it has as it hungers for you. Me. It's honestly such a tense ride, but moving away from the thing that solos a decent amount of one piece characters, if you know you know. And talk about our next story that takes place back on the land, the tall grass. Have you ever heard strange noises or seen lights in the distance that you simply can't explain? Train rides through the country, normally not too interesting, but this one was different. Want to stop next to a field of tall grass in the middle of nowhere? The middle of nowhere! Suddenly, strange lights begin to appear from the darkness, almost like our protagonist was being called to the grass by the other primal instinct, one that goes against our fear, curiosity. He was caught like a fish on a fishing line, dragged out until he was gasping for air, then like out of nowhere, reminiscent of the video game Halo CE, when you first encounter the space zombies known as the Flood, heart pounding music began to play, as our protagonist is chased through the grass by hundreds of creatures that look as though they have come straight from the depths of hell, clawing and reaching out for him, but does he make it out, was he fast enough? That mix of awe and curiosity draws to the unknown, it's like a kind of door opens up out there. I figure it leads to some other world. The fear of how little we truly know always hangs over us. Or at least for me. Cosmic Horror, also known as Lovecraftian Horror. Referring back to the creator of Cthulhu, Lovecraft, Cosmic Horror is focused around the ideas of the unknowable and unimaginable, a forbidden knowledge no human should ever discover. This knowledge often leads to their undoing, whether that be to madness due to their newfound awareness of their place in the grand scheme of the universe, or an awakening of a being far beyond themselves. Something ancient, in vaulted halls entombed is a story about soldiers, on a mission that takes them deep into a cave. But like, what's on the other end though? Well. Something they would have never even imagined in their most bizarre dream. They stumble upon dead bodies, slime, weird creatures. Until they enter a massive room, they would hear an echo. A strange voice off in the distance that felt as though it was calling for them. They make their way towards it, scaling down steps far too massive to be made for humans. Eventually, they would make it into what it looked like a prison. But who was its prisoner? It, it's pretty much Cthulhu. Bro was literally Cthulhu or Cthulhu's cousin, Richard. And the existential dread that a being like this actually existed. The fact that a deity like Monster is just below the surface. Us just living our lives without a care in the world. And more thoughts start running through the mind. Beliefs come into question? Who or what could have imprisoned such a being? Was it always here? Or did it come from some distant galaxy? Or other universe? What does it say about our origin as a species? And suddenly, Everything around you feels so much bigger. Meanwhile, you shrink in the grandness of the cosmos. I think back to when I was a kid, hearing creepy noises just outside my bedroom door. In the darkness of the night, I stayed hidden under the covers, but part of me was compelled to take a peek, to take one step out and explore what was beyond those shadows. Our desire as humans to know more, our search to understand the unknown has pushed humanity forward. But do you think in search for these greater answers, we'll find something we wish we could have left a mystery? Would you rather live in ignorant bliss or discover what's beyond. Have you ever wondered what was beyond the observable universe? And if you don't know what that means, it's pretty much what we can see of space from Earth in our telescopes. Since light from stars and galaxies take time to reach us, there's a limit to what we can see. So the question, what is beyond that, has always fascinated me. Beyond the Aquila Rift is a story about mysteries like that. Mysteries that make you ask more questions, but it also makes you ask yourself if you actually want that answer. It's also based off of a book of the same name by Alistair Reynolds, in a starship that was sent light years off its original course. 
our protagonist wakes up to an unfamiliar location with a woman that he may or may not truly know. Everything seems normal at first, but as the episode goes on, you feel this kind of uneasiness, like something's not quite right. And if you've ever had a dream where you felt as though you were awake, Certain things felt off, but you couldn't quite figure it out. That's pretty much how this whole episode feels. Like you know the person in front of you, yet they feel like a stranger. And to me, that's one of the most unsettling things I can imagine. But the question is, do you actually want to know what the reality truly is? Or would you fall back asleep into an ignorant bliss? Like in the movie, The Matrix, there are two different worlds. The simulation, which is a dream world, or reality, which is a cruel and unforgiving one. Do you take the blue or red pill? And I used this thematic parallel in another video, but I'm using it again. I don't care. You take the blue pill. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Well, if you end up taking the red pill and giving in to curiosity to find out what is beyond those shadows. Yeah, I Amazing stories like these will continue to capture the minds of generations. And honestly, I know I'll keep being pulled along for more. But until next time, dear viewer, peace out. Cthulhu Dr. Seuss.